The following is a Journey to Comics Network production. Hey everyone, this is Joanna from Literature and Butt Stuff. You are listening to the Journey into Comics Network Best of the Week show. Highlights from all the episodes on the network this week. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Journey into Comics. Ah! Once again. Sorry folks, that's a podcast sneeze. You don't typically catch me doing that, so that's uh... Keep that one for the record books or some shit on the four-year anniversary of Journey into <laughs> Comics. Actually, uh, what was it? Uh, la- ladies and gentlemen, Artois you? Yeah, that was episode 20. Episode 20. I'll be damn. My brain's pretty weird like that, Brando. Uh, speaking of things that are weird, Deadpool 2 is moving up in the timeline. What do you think about this? Um, It's going to be interesting because... It's they they move it up a week before the solo movie, which we haven't seen anything about yet. But I got something to say about the solo movie. But I mean, it's gonna be interesting because it's gonna be able to like you're putting Deadpool up, which Deadpool's gonna be a big awesome movie. But then you're gonna be putting it up head to head against another like it's a Star Wars property. No matter what preconception is, people are gonna go see that movie. It's a busy, expensive month of May. It is with Avengers too in there. Do you think that Deadpool will, um, in some form or fashion, find a way to tie itself into the MCU right here and then and there? And that was part of their decision to to move uh, to accelerate things because Fox and Disney or Disney has already said, you know, Deadpool's not going anywhere. We're not worried about changing the rated R. You know, I'm sure Ryan Reynolds is going to be on. You know. There's no reason that shouldn't happen. So, do you see any reason for them to like try to interconnect these now? It may be way too late as far as like making the movie, and then ed- like they're doing final editing now. That's true. So, like, unless like as far as like major storyline plot to tie it in, it may be too late. You may be able to do a wink and a nod, do a uh, a, go- a good old classic Deadpool fourth wall break, but. I don't know. Like an after credit scene. At the end, that's possible. But then again, it's like, was there already an after credit scene planned? Do you do that one and then now do a mid credit? You know, it all depends. It really does. It's very, it's, it's, it seems like we're getting at least two really awesome movies in May now. Well, possibly three because check this out. All right. So let's talk about the solo movie just for a minute. All right. There are so many fears that this movie is going to freaking blow, all right? Now, we know that Lucasfilm parted ways with the other two directors because they wanted to do a more improv thing, and they wanted them to follow the script. Okay? Do you know who wrote the script? I don't. Lawrence Kasdan. Didn't he write uh, Empire Strikes Back? And Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. Shit, and he, and he, he basically he was at odds with the directors, saying, "I want you to f- more cl- closely follow the script," and they're like, "No, we want to do more improv." And that got Kathleen Kennedy involved, and then she goes, hey, "Okay, think about it like this: If you're Kathleen Kennedy and you got these two guys, and you got Lawrence fucking Kazdan, he's the closest thing to fucking royalty that they have." At, I'm no offense to these two directors. I I assume that they know all the best in their vision. This guy has proved himself in the fact that he knows how to write a Star Wars movie. I'm just saying. If the moment I read wrong. the moment I read that, the moment I was like, you know, because we brought it up here on the show before, and, and and you've definitely let your feelings known on the matter that you're worried and that. You wish they wouldn't have made the switch. But now it's like, I cannot argue against this until, obviously, we see the movie. Because not only now do we have, like, Lawrence Kasdan's script, and I, and I think he also wrote it with uh, another Kasdan. It may be his son. I don't know. Son, brother, cousin, brother. I don't know. But then you bring in Ron Howard, very well accomplished director, to try and finish this thing. Now, 
it, it, the reports have been that they brought in an acting coach because the kid playing Han can't act. So is it because he couldn't act? Is it because he can't act like Harrison Ford? Is it because he couldn't improv? What is it with this that made that a de- Was it to to flesh out this character more that he's having trouble emoting? Because with the cast that was on board with the whole improving thing, you I mean, you got like Woody Harrelson. Yeah. He he, he can improv. Oh yeah. You know, you got Donald Glover, he can improv, I bet. I guarantee you he can. Well, and Donald Glover just came out recently, Brando. I don't know if you know this. He said, he's like, don't worry. This movie's going to be awesome. It's going to do things that haven't been done before in Star Wars. It's going to be good. I think, and and I may be making a bold prediction here all the way in January, but I think this movie is going to surprise the doubters. It's, it, it's a Kazdan script, so instantly it got credibility with me. He hasn't, he hasn't hit a foul ball yet. He hasn't. Uh... He wrote the best Star Wars movie of all time, followed up by two of the other better Star Wars movies of all time. So, I, I, if I were Kathleen Kennedy, it's like, Kennedy, it's like, what do I do? Do I choose between the two new guys or Lawrence Kasdan? Lawrence Kasdan wins in my book. Uh, I, yeah. If anybody would know how to write a Han Solo movie, it's going to be this dude. Absolutely. He so, was in the thick of the best of Han Solo. Exactly. And then he got to kill Han Solo. Oh, also true. So, Brando, Jesus. You know, and this is his last script, too. This is his last one that he's doing. So, Oh, wow. You know uh, it, you know what's weird, though, Brando? I think that this, this is going to have the same kind of Rogue One effect. If you'll remember, man, people were nervous about Rogue One. This movie's mm-hmm. going to suck. I don't know. It's not going to be that good. How do we? How can we get into a Star Wars movie where we know how it ends? Holy shit, were we wrong. <laughs> like, they made us believers. So, you know, while I'm nervous about the future and what everything holds, I am, I would say, more cautiously optimistic that they can pull out something fantastic. Um, I just really hope they do. And it's not, you know, a terrible fumble in the Star Wars universe that sets some shit back. I am pretty excited for it. You know, uh, when we said that the dude playing Han's a nobody, Caitlin knows who he is. Really? Yeah, he was in something that she's seen. Well, I have not. Her first reaction was, oh, he's a good actor, which (laughs) cracked me up because of what we've said about him here on the show. (laughs) (laughs) He needed an acting coach, not a good actor. (laughs) Oh, he's a good actor. Well, it makes you wonder. It's like, what is the... What is the whole purpose of that coach? And well, it's like, was he a bad actor, not bad per se, or was he just not being directed the way they needed to direct him? Was it not being directed? Was it not finding the character? Was it not... Because when you're playing a young Han Solo, so much of Han Solo is Harrison Ford. So it you're you're mimicking Harrison Ford. You know, not a lot of people can pull that off. I think it I think Donald Glover could pull off Billy Dee Williams. No doubt. Oh yeah. No doubt. So it's like I I want to say that maybe she had seen him in a movie called Beautiful Creatures. Okay. Um I had, I have no idea what the movie is. I never saw it. It came out in 2013. Um, but I mean, he, he's been in, he's been in some like smaller stuff. Of course he was, he did one episode of Supernatural in 2005, way younger. He was in CSI and then from there you go on to some smaller films and I think that might be the biggest thing that he's done. I mean, granted, I, I'm, I'm not at one to say because, uh, I'm not the biggest film buff. I guarantee you, if you guys say here on Foodies, you're like, well, I've heard of that. Oh, I've heard of that. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, mm hmm. Because Hail <laughs> Caesar. He was in Hail Caesar.
The Poor Four. Four articles, I'm going to talk about it once a week for 30 to 40 minutes. And if there's something else that comes up, that can always change. But I think The Poor Four is simple, and it works, and it's easy to remember. And I have a couple ideas I'm going to roll out, probably containing this episode or with future episodes, that I think will be a nice treat for moving forward. But I think with that, I'm going to talk about the poor four. A poor a poor first. Now, for any of you paying attention to the news come out this week, there's been an interesting development around a word. That word being shithouse. And it involves everyone's favorite president, President Donald J. Trump. Now, before this, if you looked up Trump and shithouse, you might just get a Yelp review for one of his hotels. But with that, you really don't know what this is going to be. I mean, you could look up, why is shithouse trending on Twitter? Why is why are people talking about shithouse on Facebook? So it turns out, last week, while Donald Trump was in a meeting to talk about immigration, and he had a bunch of lawmakers over, and I guess it came out with like a, things to talk about, like, why do we need more Haitians? Take them out. That's basically kind of what he's saying. And then a few minutes after that, he says, like, why are we having all, like, when they're talking about, like, African nations and immigrants from African or South American or Central American countries, and he goes, why are we having all these people from these shithole countries come here? And, one, wow, that's crazy to come from a president. Like, what, I don't know how a president could even say stuff like that. Even behind closed doors. You know, when you're a president, nothing is ever behind closed doors for long. Especially with what I talked about last week when we were reading the that book by Michael Wolf where he talked about like everyone has their own person everyone can get their information out leaks are common in administrations especially ones that are kind of as haphazardly handled as the Trump administration and then he can go and say like I never said that all that's all fine and good but interesting enough that like earlier in the recorded messages and I know Dick Durbin who's from Illinois who my father actually knows because he was involved with city government and state government and all that so he's kind of familiar with that but it's interesting to mention Haitians because Margo a Largo Margo a Largo which whatever Trump calls his Palm Beach Florida golf club resort they actually use Haitians so the Margo Largo uses like 70 or so H2B visas which are temporary work permits issued by the Department of Labor to employers who can't find enough American workers to fill their need for low-skilled seasonal labor, like your janitors, your launderers, your... Basically, the people you don't see actively, the people who do a lot of the cleaning and behind-the-scenes grunt work, like outdoor work and all that, just laborers is basically what they Jobs that they can't find Americans to do, which I feel is kind of crazy, especially in the state of Florida. I feel like there's people and and that might do that work even if it's maybe low paying but that's fine they make 10 to 13 hour which is you could probably get some teenagers to do that work during their their height season during the kids school break or high schoolers after school i don't know but i think that's something that could be done everyone needs cooks and servers and all that but that's beside the point that's the reason for those visas so that they can hire unskilled laborers give them visas so bringing foreigners to that and the whole thing that I understand Trump says that his old business and his presidency are completely separated, which to me is kind of bullshit because if Trump's anything, he never cuts ties completely, even if it's an act. He has a passive involvement in his company because he wouldn't let it fall apart. If, say, one of his kids messed up, he wouldn't let it fall. He would intervene behind closed doors. But that's fine. It's It's whatever it is. But it's kind of funny. He said, why do we need more Haitians? Maybe he's like, why do we need more Haitians? I have the 70 I need to get my job done. Why does everyone else need them? Or why do I care what they do? So that's just my point on that. It's kind of crazy that Trump can make these comments and then deny these comments. And it's rightfully made a lot of people angry. A lot of foreign diplomats and people in other countries. Or I think he made the comment about Norway. About why can't we get immigrants from Norway coming in? And then people from Norway are like, why would we want to come to your shithole country is basically kind of what they said. Like, Norway is doing pretty well for themselves. They don't need to go to America for any reason. It's just interesting, and it kind of baffles me, things that come out of Trump's mouth. And I shouldn't be surprised, and no should anyone in America. But anything he could say, we'd be like, oh, that's that's just Trump. Like, nothing is news. Like, 
for any other presidency, some of the stuff he says on a random Tuesday would be front page news for weeks. But because it's Trump and because there's always going to be a next crisis, a next event, something stupid he's going to say, that's it. Like, that'll it'll just blow over by tomorrow. Like, we don't remember, like, no one else is talking about the fact that he paid off a prostitute, like, 150 grand right before he got elected. I didn't even know that happened. If that would have been Obama eight years ago, I don't think he would have got elected. It's It's just ridiculous that because... There's always something bigger. There's always something new. We become so desensitized to the things Trump does that it's not news anymore. We don't care. Like, the only thing... It's just... We're over it. It's ridiculous. But with that said, I think it's been kind of funny. Uh, Since all this came out, people have been kind of having fun. Like, someone literally went to one of Trump's hotels and projected shithole above the Trump hotel sign. So it says, shithole, Trump International Hotel. Like, that's awesome. They did it... At the uh, D.C. hotel. So, like, the one that's, like, down the street from the White House. It's fantastic. I like people who are at least making a stance. And because it's projection, they're not, like, graffitiing it. They're not really breaking any laws. It's just funny. And as long as you don't get caught, you're fine. And I think it's just, just great. (laughs) Now, moving on to something a little more serious and a little kind of ridiculous is that in Honolulu, Hawaii, for a half hour on Saturday morning... The state, the whole state believed it was under attack because at around 8 a.m., alert went to everyone's cell phone that said, Ballistic missile threat inbound to Hawaii. Seek immediate shelter. This is not a drill. Which is serious, serious, serious business. Like, if you saw that, your whole life would change in a beat, like a heartbeat. Because you don't know how big it is, how many there are, what's going to happen you're going to immediately try and find the safest place to be, get all your loved ones, text people you don't care about, or not, sorry, not text people you don't care about, text people you do care about, all your loved ones, get everyone where they need to be, pets, you'll pack a bag, get all the necessities you think you'll need, bottled water, all of this, because you don't know what's going to happen or what the state's going to end up with if this is true. And the thing is, for 38 minutes, these people thought they were living in hell, because they didn't know when this was happening, how much time they had. Every minute... That this thing probably felt like an eternity to these people. People are like sitting in their bathtubs, sitting in their crawl spaces, in a shelter. If they were driving on the street, they probably got out of their car, left it running, and ran into like a building or a structure, or a basement, someplace to be out of whatever harm's way they thought they were in. And it all turns out that this was an incident because someone pressed the wrong button. How in the world can someone accidentally tr- trigger this? text that goes to everyone these alerts it played on tv and radio station that this was happening how can someone accidentally do this this should be just as serious as a launching a nuclear missile there should be a two key system that you don't accidentally throw a whole state into chaos like if someone did that in illinois i don't know what would happen like you can't just i don't know, you this shouldn't ever be a thing like, I understand, if something is major to happen, you want to get it out as soon as possible. But it shouldn't be as simple as clicking a, going into Google Chrome on your desktop. It should be something that's a little more serious. Like, a button that's under a lock and key. Or like the freaking Batman signal, move Shakespeare's head, push a button. I don't care. It shouldn't be something that can be accidentally pressed. And it took him 38 minutes for them to call it off. 38 minutes is way too long for an incident. Five minutes is too long for something like that. Because you know the second you press that, it's going to send it out. And you can be like, oh crap, I sent it out. Cancel, cancel. There should be a way to abort it if it's not a problem. It just baffles me. Like, literally, if you... I've gotten the emergency text for, like, weather. Or for... I've gotten, like, the Amber Alerts. But, like... If you saw ballistic missile threat inbound to Hawaii, seek immediate shelter, what are you going to do? That is just bonkers that this can have... I don't know. It's ridiculous. I mean, I gotta applaud. People did get their act together when they saw this happening. People were the most helpful. Like, people driving or seeing people on the streets without cell phones or on the beach in Hawaii and being like, Hey, this is happening. We need to get safety. People were really stepping up and showing their true colors and helping each other out. But you can't imagine how it feels to, like, 
Maybe say goodbye to a loved one. Do you think for the last time? Kissing your child, maybe for the last time. Call, calling your parents, texting the loved ones that aren't in Hawaii and being like, I probably will never see you again. It's just crazy. And I don't even know how to perceive that. Like, there's no way that this should be a thing. Red meat, we crave sustenance. Guys, we are not invading my aunt. <laughs> right now because i'm eating this cookie <laughs> probably first, one of the most popular coen brothers movies arguably maybe at least top five yeah we needed to talk about that because some of my all-time favorite movies are coen brother movies well we'll get into that because we want to spend some time on lebowski first obviously okay. did you see on episode nine that also uh was it quentin tarantino is also up there for you yeah yeah, I love Wes Quentin Anderson Tarantino. is amazing too. Wes Anderson is definitely See, in my Wes top Anderson five. is hit or miss for me. Like, we need Absolutely. to have a whole episode dedicated we, we to Wes Anderson. But Wes Life, Anderson of, Life Aquatic with yes. Steve Zissou is a masterpiece. Oh my I don't god, in the soundtrack, says. I love it. And the, I think the only <laughs> Wes Anderson film I liked was a. Uh, Oh, what's the one? The, the, only the Royal Tenenbaums? Bombs. Oh, I love that See, movie. That's a great okay, movie too. that's one of my favorite movies. It was one of my night 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 movies for a while. I think there's only three or maybe four Wes Andersons I get down on. Oh my god, I love them all. What's the great? one you Moonlight, introduced me to? Moonlight Kingdom. Yes, Moonrise. Kingdom. Moonrise. 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 That one was fucking phenomenal. It was like a little tiny bijou, like a little art piece gem that. I loved. It was so sweet What's and the other one? fucking the precious. The Budapest, the Darjeeling Limited. Yeah, I didn't like the Darjeeling Limited. No. The, he did the Life Aquatic, right? You yeah, said the that. Life Aquatic. I tried to watch the movie. It was amazing. I did to watch it again because I think I was right. Fantastic Mr. Fox. That yeah, that one was incredible. I loved Is that, that and I loved movie? George Clooney in it. Yeah, it was like I fell asleep during that movie, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, this is going to be a heated podcast <laughs> yeah, when, when we, we talk, we'll talk about, about Wes Anderson. We'll do a, we'll, we should do like our Everybody's favorite. going to have their homework assignments. We, have, we should have our we're... favorite, our favorite our, uh, director's film catalog. Okay. It's like each come with our own and try and defend it to the others would be kind of fun. I'm down. Do so like a, like a two ep- like a two episode like a part one part two. That sounds good. Of what? Of a uh, like a director. <laughs> You pick a director's catalog as like your favorite and defend it to everyone else and do a two part. Ooh, I love that actually. That's actually a really like, great you idea. Come with Wes Anderson, you can I will not. Tarantino. I will not do Michael Bay. No, no, no he's not allowed to be Bay. talked about on our he's fucking not, podcast. Don't really be hard to this like. This is a bring, Michael Bay free zone. You can't bring like Steven Spielberg in. It's like, well, I think all thirty of Steven Spielberg's films are amazing. You can't just bring that character. You have to. More of an eclectic I, indie I like, director. I like directors that have a style. Like Wes Anderson mm-hmm. has a style. The, the Coen brothers. brothers have a style. Mm-hmm. Stanley Kubrick has a style. Tarantino has Tarantino a style. Tarantino has a style. Spielberg very clearly has a style. Scorsese has a style. Abrams has a style. Everybody has their own Kevin fucking Smith? style. Of course, ar- you could argue that J.J. Abrams does not necessarily have as much style as he has lens flair, but he's gotten better about it. He was really bad there for a couple movies. Star though. Trek is crazy with the lens oh flare. Oh my god, that in, um, uh, uh, Super 8... Did you ever Super see 8 was Super a great 8? movie, though. But, oh I didn't my see that. God, there. You've never seen Super 8? You gotta watch it. Give it on Blu ray. Legitimately, in my whole fucking life, <laughs> cannot believe you've not seen this movie right now. It's a great no. movie. It is amazing. It has got a beautiful story. It is so well directed. The cinematography is gorgeous. It is believable through and through until the twist. The young cast is right. the best thing since Stranger Things. Absolutely. But before, even. They were yeah, before the Stranger best Things. Best things before, until Stranger Things. I got you. Yeah, totally. Okay. For that age group. I'm down. I'd watch it. I'll I watch it again. We have it on Blu-ray, so we'll watch That'll it. That'll be my homework assignment. Cool, definitely. For next time. Uh, so, dude, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking <laughs> about Lebowski. I wanted to know you guys. When, do you guys remember the first time you've seen Le Big Lebowski? This was my first time ever seeing it. Okay, talk about it. So oh my God. let's get your first reaction of this movie that is a cult classic. It's crazy to me that you've never seen this movie. Yeah, first time seeing the Big Lebowski. Yes, I'm so pleased. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> I love that he was a bowler, and I love that they peed on his rug, and that was pretty much the impetus for the that whole movie. That was the movie. catalyst. Like, if you would have been okay with that, it, it was like, fucking Walter's movie. fault. But Walter is like the instigator of this movie, and just totally made this whole thing happen the way that it's not supposed to happen if he would have just let it let the fucking rug go china man peed on my rug no it's asian american (laughs) china man is not the right nomenclature i love that listen walter's not wrong though 
Most of the time in this movie, was Walter is actually not wrong. Was I wrong? <laughs> he rightly predicts the majority of what actually happens and tells the dude that that is how it's going to be, and that's just how it is, you know. Uh, but yes, the. Um, the we could have a whole podcast dedicated rug, to just Walter and his and relationship with Donnie. <laughs> the rug really tied the room together, together, you know? Yeah. yeah. Really tied the room together. I love that Lucifer is in that movie. For anyone who watches what was Supernatural. That? Lucifer? I like it. If you watch Supernatural, Lucifer is one of the guys, the guy from the beginning who puts him in the toilet. Oh. oh. I'm an old Supernatural fan. That They're going guy. to cut off your Johnson Lebowski. <laughs> <laughs> what did they throw in the bathtub with him? Isn't it a, a ferret? ferret. A marmot. I did marmot. not like the ferret part. That mean that bummed me out. And I've seen this movie many times. I remember watching it years ago, like when it came out in like 1998 or something. And I've loved this movie for a long time. But I love like all of the Coen brother movies. And it's just got that whole. It's like you know you're watching that movie. You're watching a Coen brothers movie when you're watching it. Was the Big Lebowski your favorite Coen brothers movie? Uh, the Big Lebowski is like in my. I, oh God! It's hard because there's a lot of good. I'm. I the really. Answer is yes for me. I really love Oh Brother Where Art Thou. Mm. That's my favorite Coen Brothers movie. Beautiful I love soundtrack. the soundtrack. You know, not, as a singer, not, I love that a, shit. George Clooney in that movie. Mm-hmm. George Clooney is phenomenal and, in that uh, movie. And the guy that plays the Jesus. He's in uh, Oh Brother. John Torture is, I think, in a lot of Coen Brothers Thank movies. You. Yeah, that's one of the things that I like Torturo about the Coen Brothers, Brothers movies is that they utilize a lot of the same actors in their different movies. I love well, Raising Arizona. It's a great oh movie. my god, and Raising Arizona is that's one thing uh, about very so prolific directors is that they use a lot of the same actors because they know what they're going to get out of them. So they're right. dependable, and they have a chemistry with them, so they know how to get what they want from these actors. And it's just like watching. High art, you know, the Big Lebowski is like high um, art, man. I think every, did everyone rewatch it before today? I like the double entendre. Huh? Did everyone rewatch the movie before today? We was started that... it last night and then we finished watching it well, today. I was surprised that Ares God of War was in this movie. What up? Ares, David Thewlis, Ares from Wonder Woman was in the movie. I didn't even see. Do you remember? He's, uh, he's the, the giggly guy in uh, Julianne Moore's office. With like the shaved head, oh. lupus yeah, from Lupin. Uh, Harry, Lupin from Harry lupus Potter. Lupus is a disease. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn! Now I feel everyone like had shit. on house. Everyone had lupus. <laughs> it's fine. The rug really tied the room together. I just want to say it again. Like it's the whole He's, purpose of the movie. That's why we pigs in a blanket He's, today. That was good. Yeah, we have pigs in a blanket. Nate made his famous Hell pigs yeah. in a blanket. He used Gouda cheese today. I wanted to make him a little more fancy and really tie the whole episode together. So tie I tie the lunch I, together. Yeah, so I made I used honey croissants instead of regular croissants. Gouda cheese got that nice flavor. Put a little extra gouda on the top there and a little like crisscrossy thing. Um, basic ass hot dogs because they're they're fucking hot dogs. I mean, you always do uh, <laughs> can't do much. You, with you hot always dogs. could scale them down and do like little smokies in those and do very small ones. You could That's do. how I make them. I always cut them in half and then just wrap them like that. I eat them, you know, by the fistful. So I just have them in the big. They're just no, I'm not. They're really delicious. But uh, anyways, I just thought that you actually had suggested that brilliantly. Like pigs in a blanket, carpet rug, blanket. Toe. Yeah. It all works. Yeah, it all... we see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, it works out. So makes sense for the Compa- episode, Compa- I guess. I love thematically charging the food to the movie. Totally. And then you brought the white Russian stuff we've been jamming oh. on. They're really yeah, mine was a little strong. Really tasty. <laughs> I had Ooh. to mix, put a little bit in my coffee. This is not bruise with dudes. Just... This hey, is not drug catastrophe. No, wait, there's, but there's no bruise. It's all <laughs> liquor. Foodies only. True. Foodies actually like only done liquor. I'm okay with I that. I had done beer at all on food. Not true. We, I'm totally we had, we had fine a, with we that. We had a, um, yeah, what was um, that? I, was I not here for that? You know what? We actually never officially talked about this on the podcast. We drank it before the podcast and oh, then forgot shit, really? to discuss this. Was that the episode, episode I wasn't on? It was the episode that AP was not on, but we drank the... Uh, was this the cheese episode? Yes. It oh, was that was a whole lot of cheese. whole yeah. lot of cheese episode, but we had the uh, yeah, we, Three we Floyds, like Dark TV Matter, the Crack the Sky. It's a... A beer they did with Mastodon. It was an Imperial Russian coffee stout. It's a very pretty picture. Oh, it, well, that's the the Mastodon band's fucking art. But uh, very cool. it was, I, I mean, personally, I don't know about you guys, but I really love it. I think coffee's a great way to drink beer. Like, mix oh, them together. It tastes good, great. Like a coffee stout? Mm-hmm. 
that's exactly what it was. I have a wig splitter at home. Mm-hmm. A wig splitter. And, Still, yeah. You got a bunch of those from uh, Whole, Whole Foods. Foods. Yeah, I gave one to my ex roommate um, when she was taking a train to California, and then I have a long slowly, train ride. Yeah, I've slowly drank fun, all of them except for one. <laughs> Delicious. I had to have another cookie. Yeah, I'm I'm working on my second I, one. They're pretty good. I, I think a good coffee out. or a milk stout are always good. I had a Maloco, but I didn't really I didn't really like it that much. I I definitely prefer Malocos when I'm like out. They're not as good when I've had them at home. Oh. I'm not a beer enthusiast, so I have no idea what that means, and I would love for you to educate me. Maloco mm-hmm. is a three Floyds milk stout. Isn't isn't Lauren hosting Bruce with dudes? Yeah, that's in like the, a month. Well, that's a, that's a spoiler. Oh, is it a spoiler? You're creating a spoiler now. So that's oh, a sorry. spoiler paradox. You might bleep that one out. <laughs> sorry. Because uh, that all hasn't been announced, because it's probably not going to be announced, if you catch my drift. Well, maybe not. So maybe this be... one can just be announced as a teaser. No. Well, maybe it could be a teaser, but maybe there's a future episode where there's going to be brews and ladies hosting, and it'll Bruce, be great. Bruce and ladies. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be great, and we, you know, we can host that here or whatever, and it'll be a fun, it'll be a fun time, I would say. Yeah. I would imagine if that actually were to happen in an alternate universe. Same. Thanks, guys. She is a great woman. She's a great woman. She's the best woman. Look at what she created. She created mm-hmm. this heritage. I wanted. To, I would like. I wish your mom, if you would, leave in the comments how you keep yourself in such great shape. Like I have met a lot of my friends' moms, and they are not attractive in she any way, crossfit. shape, or form. Oh, wow. She's For a, a second, I thought she was about to say cross dress, and I was like, "Oh fuck, this is a great topic." <laughs> This is something that he, he just lets it slip at the last moment. He's uh, like, I uh, never told you guys this. No, because this would have been, I've been talking about this still. <laughs> my goodness. Like, if I were to tell you my dad was a cross-dresser, like, this would be an in-depth conversation. <laughs> this would be an eight-hour podcast. And oh, then me calling my dad crying, asking him if he'll change his ways. <laughs> <laughs> or if you can be like him. Um <laughs> So one of the things we wanted to talk about today was if uh, we ever get there. If we ever get there was a uh, beard care products. Mm-hmm. Uh, I asked. <sighs> I'm out I, on I, this I one. specifically asked you. You said, "Oh, I'm, I think I'm going to shave here in the next day or so." And I said, "No, Richard, don't shave. We're going to do this podcast, and we're going to talk about beard oil and shit. And what do you do? You shave. I Literally shave. The next you like a naked mole rat. I, I, you know what? My wife." I, you know, when I met her, <laughs> she... remember, hold on one second. Remember that one time you were walking, we were walking up to work and you're, and you're like, Hey, <laughs> if I, I, if I come into work on Monday and I, I have a shaved face, it's because I, I did. fuck my wife in the ass <laughs> and I came in, and Monday, came in shaved, I, came, like... I came in with, with my wife that following Monday and everybody walked up to me and they're like, Oh yeah! Yeah, you I, I remember. I, hi- I, fi- I high fived you right in front of her. <laughs> oh my god! My wife didn't understand what was going on, so she made me explain the story to her. And she's like, "You made me look so foolish." I was like, "This is something I do to myself every day online. <laughs> do not I live this. I live this life." Anyways, beard care products. So uh, we have a bunch of the stuff that we Tyler and I use, not you. Well, uh, 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 I had a beard for a long you time. You had a beard for a short time. I looked life. like I had Down syndrome all no, the beginning you of the week. No, no, I kept licking. This is what I spent. You know why I shaved it off? Is because I didn't properly trim it the way I should have. And I kept licking. I do that. I started my mouth. And eventually, <laughs> I, eventually I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I don't want to do it anymore. I've had this fucking thing for a year. And then I shave my face and I have been told that I'm a big breasted 12 year old kid. <laughs> okay. And I got carded for fucking cigarettes. I got carded for fucking alcohol. And I went all year and they didn't card me for shit. That's why you have a beard. I will yeah, now. No shit, I, I will grow my beard back. <clears throat> but go ahead. I'm in, anyway. I'm going gonna, gonna to start off. So some of the beard care products I use. I Urination. use this. I it's always good to have a boar bristle brush. Of it has sorts. to be boar bristle. Boar bristle. 
because it, it really gets in there and it, it spreads the oil around really well. I'm demonstrating for the live feed. Um, and it, it basically scratches the, the dead skin and whatnot. It, it exfoliates. It, it, it exfoliates. It softens the hair as mm-hmm. well. It, it basically friction. It, it, the friction softens up the, the edges of the hair. Uh, then you get a, a wood comb. Very important, either stainless steel or wood. Uh, you don't want one of those bullshit plastic mm-hmm. plastic ones because uh, there are microscopic little edges, razor edges on the plastic, and it will it will um, basically tear the shit out of your hair and, and, and your, tangle and your face and your face. It'll tangle up the hair. It's it's not good. It's so not the good. the important thing about wood beard <laughs> beard combs is it has to either be sandalwood, bamboo, or pear wood. And it's it's very important that it's one of those three because all three of those are naturally anti-static. And when the wood is polished, they create their own uh, lubricating properties. So it sli- it slides through your beard just fine. And, uh, you know, they're easy to maintain. They're all water resistant. Um, you don't have to worry about bacteria or mold or anything growing in them. Um, I recently purchased this pear wood comb by viking revolution and i'm really happy with it i bought it 90 percent just because of the name yeah. it's got viking in it but it's pear wood it's really good quality and the nice thing about these little combs is most of them now most of the companies that manufacture them now give you this cool little sleeve to put them in so you know throw it yeah. in a uh toiletry bag or Something, so then you always have it, because we can't go around with our beards looking all scraggly. Oh, hell no. I take great pride in my beard when I have one, which is about 80% of the year. Well, this is the first time in my life that I've been able to have a beard because of where I work. Proud of you. So, I like it a lot. (laughs) Um, So, one, okay, so I've, I've gone through a couple different companies in terms of beard oil, uh, a company I used to go through was uh, Grave Before Shave. Mm-hmm. I Which like I have them. some stuff from today. Yeah, you have the pine. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I like them a lot, and then I found uh, this company called Noble Grooming, which apparently, they're, as, a, as I know of today, um, they no longer sell products, which sucks because I really like their Everest beard oil. It smells, uh, it smells really great. Uh, but I've, I moved on to a new thing seconds. called God, The dude. Beard Struggle. You are so lucky. Mm. Your wife is a lucky woman. I would have at you if you came <laughs> to the bedroom smelling like after a shower. I wish the I wish you had the microphone so people could hear you, Richard. Sorry, I was just saying that uh, <laughs> I I would have my way with you if that's what you came out of the shower smelling like. <laughs> everybody comes out of the shower smelling like Axe or uh, Old Spice, but no one comes out of the shower smelling like pure tree sap. That is a savage beard yeah, right so there. So I recently purchased this uh, Grave Before Shave brand that Blaine just talked about, uh, Pine Scent. And uh, a lot of the problems and reasons I haven't bought anything Pine Scent uh, since I grew my beard or um, even when I shaved my face, I used a lot of essential oils and shit because, you know, we, yeah. have, a, we have man skin. It sucks when your fucking face is all chafed up and scraggly. So... But <clears throat> Pine, Batman doesn't have that problem. That's right. Batman doesn't have that problem. That's because he's made out of alabaster <laughs> and marble. I mean, he's a chiseled figure. <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> so a lot of the times that people uh, market stuff that's pine scent, it smells like pine saw. You know, it, I'm sorry. It's a, it's a, it's that artificial, overpowering, yeah. just nasty, oh. like uh, disinfecting. Uh-huh. You know, like what you would smell in a, a hospital. Um, I bought this on a whim. I've never went to a hospital, and it smelled like I just finished polishing my wood <laughs> in my house. <laughs> <laughs> I have. Maybe that's why I don't like hospitals. But uh, <clears throat> this pine scent's really good. You know, I think I paid 10 bucks for this. Yeah. And most of them come in one-ounce uh, containers. For something that I'm going to use... Uh, I don't want to say regularly because obviously it's not something that you use every day. Uh, weekly. But weekly, you know. Once. One ounce will last you a long time. And uh, some of them get really uh, outrageously expensive. 
there's a company that I found on Amazon that if you were to buy it uh, in a gallon, it would be thirty two hundred dollars. Oh, so shit. you know you're buying it an ounce at a time, and I'm complaining about spending ten bucks. You know, you, if you add it up over a year, you know you spend thirty two hundred dollars a year on beard oil. That's that's quite a bit excessive. So I've been really happy with the great before shave stuff. You have too. Yeah, uh, I used like I said, I used to use that, and then I. I kind of I started branching out like this Everest by Noble Grooming. I've been using it for oh, a year. Let me smell this. The a one year. that the one that you gave me. That's was, fantastic. What what I gave you Ignite. Oh my god. Oh. And what did that smell like? Oh my god. It literally smelled like I worked full time at Hobby Lobby. He, like, gave, he gave me his other two. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I, I it smelled like Hobby Lobby. Like you put this in your beard. So pungent and, potpourri. Oh, it was uh, an array <clears throat> of smells. I mean, it was just a plethora, if I Ooh, might call it. A cornucopia of, of smells. smells, yes. <laughs> I mean, it was – but it, at the same – Blaine did not like it, but I, my wife – and the people that worked at Hobby Lobby loved it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sir, can you please stop rubbing your beard in the potpourri? <coughs> oh, excuse me. No. No, good. I cannot. Oh, my goodness. This is very It good. smells like conquest. <laughs> so I've, I've kind of done the opposite of I you. I understand why your girlfriend savages you quite often. Right. Savages or ravages? Both. Both. Yeah, true. So I've, I've kind of done <laughs> the opposite you... of you. Um, when I first started doing the whole beard and face and mustache thing, I went with the Blades Grimm brand. And they, they, they're, pretty, or they're a pretty diverse company. They make razors and they make all kinds of stuff. But they have a very popular beard oil called Smolder. Okay. And it's very oaky, vanilla. I mean, it's pretty standard as far as beard oils go. Good luck. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Game Addicts Podcast, the show. Where we talk about the modern and retro video games that we play and collect. This is episode 64. Today, I'm joined with this podcast player, too, Nate. Dude, how's it going? It's going pretty good. This is like your third appearance on the show. Maybe fourth. Maybe it's fourth. getting up there. Well, because we've done a few retrospectives. We with did the Xbox. 360. We 360. did the PlayStation, PlayStation 2. PlayStation 2. Uh, no was I on a regular random episode at one point in time? There was a crossover episode where like, I went up to your neck of the woods and Veronica and Rob were on. It yeah, was like early, early yeah, on. Yeah, I do remember that. So there was that episode. Um, and then we are doing this now today. Yeah, so we're, we brought you back for another retrospective. And here's the thing is that Mike never owned this system. And I didn't own it until later, but I played a lot of it when I was a kid. And that is, of course, we can't do episode 64 and not cover the Nintendo 64. Uh, it's funny, too, because that's like a callback to the uh, Journey into Comics episode 64, mm -hmm. which was Tangent 64. Yeah. Because it was like a tangential episode where we ranted about the N64 for some reason, I think. Uh, they, it might have been like a little like Easter egg thing Possibly. where a joke was made or something. Something just subtly. Uh, it's really funny, though, because as we're recording this, it's like just on the other side of Christmas. This system is something that the year it launched, I got it for Christmas. And mm -hmm. I hold that moment just right here in my chesty plate because fond memories of this system. Well, see, this system, I remember hearing about it well before it came out. And it was originally called the Ultra 64. And it was going to be coming out uh, in 95 or whatever. Uh, of course, the other uh, competitors launched in 95. That was the Sega Saturn. And then the Sony PlayStation. I think the Atari Jaguar came out in 94. And that boasted 64 bits. But it really wasn't. It was like 32 bits times 2. Which is 64. But it's not the same as a, as, as a 64-bit processor. Or, or or however you'd want to like put it put into it. it. It had two of them that were linked up into one you know, CPU or whatever. So it, 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 would, it worked differently. But of course, that massively failed. The Saturn was on life support from day one. The Sony PlayStation like launched to the moon and then it's still out there. Yeah. It's still going. It's still going, man. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like that Voyager satellite that, that just kicked on. Yeah. It did. It's like in deep space. Now it's outside of our solar system it's or something. Deep space nine. <laughs> yeah. It just kicked on for the first time. 
Oh, that's crazy. But no, this system, not to cut you off, but like this system does hold a special place in my heart. It's awesome because a lot of the games I played on this system were more rentals. This was definitely a time in my life where I was renting more games than owning. The games I did own, trust me, I have fond memories of what I owned, and a lot of those are here today. So it's going to be, I'm really excited to talk about this. I am too because in my youth, uh, my very first system I owned was the Super Nintendo. Awesome. You Love know, that system. Like I, I played the NES. I, the very first system I ever remember playing is ColecoVision for whatever reason, but I played a lot of NES, but I didn't own an NES. I got a Super NES. And then my grandma got me a Sega Genesis Model 2, and that was to be at her house. And so I was in this weird thing of when I would get new games, it was like, what, I, what do I want for what? I, I wasn't just focusing on one console. But I, I was in luck because we had like a uh, little – uh, trading ring between some of our friends with a Super Nintendo. So many kids in town have Super Nintendo, so it wasn't difficult to borrow any game. You know, so I got to play almost all the games I ever wanted to play on that system, minus a few of the rarities. You know, like Ten Star, like um, like Earthbound. I never played Earthbound when I was a kid. Ten Star is not a rare game. It's really a terrible it? shooter game. Yeah, like essentially, it's a side scroller where you're like an Earthworm Jim type character, and you're shooting all these other characters on screen by like moving the uh, D-pad to select where they are and then, like, trigger shooting them or whatever. But they have this cool thing that I never will forget from... The, it's just a Super Nintendo tangent for a second here. There was a quick draw thing in the final battle where your bullet would be on one of the six things and you would have to quickly select that bullet for it to actually fire at the hmm. bad guy. It was really weird. It was like a robotic Wild Wild West game. We'll see. I remember playing... Uh... I don't remember playing. I'm sorry. I remember not playing. Uh, well, it's like uh, Sunset Riders. Okay. Yeah. Um, I remember seeing it, never playing it because I never saw it. But like, like games like you know Turtles in Time, Turtles Tournament Fighters. I don't know if you ever played that. Yes. It was like the Turtles Fighter game. Yes, absolutely. Uh, they, they. I remember playing the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers or just Power Rangers fighting game. It only had the original five, right? No, 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 no. Okay, so that was on Genesis. For Super Nintendo, you had like, like all the Zords, and you had like the like the Shogun Zord and all that stuff. Oh, it was the fighter. It wasn't the side-scrolling game. It was just a fighting no, game. No, okay, no, it's a fighting game. But going to the N64, some of my friends went ahead and got the N64 that year, and uh, of course, going into '97, I do believe it was or '98, it, we were always like a few years behind. Like we we all weren't super rich in my no, town. No, not at all. Um, so like I was trying to decide. I my parents were gonna get me a new system, and for the longest time I was straight up N sixty four. Let's get N sixty four. I remember playing one at Walmart. I remember just playing at my friend's house. I wanted the N sixty four, and it wasn't until I spent the night at my buddy's house that I played this PlayStation. So I got a PlayStation. So I never got this until much later, and I got it off of this system, very same one. I got it off an eBay sale in two thousand six. Wow. And I got a handful of games with it. Cool. And uh, I ended up, when I sold all my video game stuff, I sold this system. No. And I sold all the games I had for it. No. And then when I started collecting, I bought the same system back from the same dude, and he had more games for it, and he just gave me all the newer ones he had. Are you serious? Yeah. That's awesome. So so, so some of the games I have now are from that. Uh, like, um, r was it Rogue Squadron and uh, Shadows of the Empire? I did not own those. Wow. Um, but, but I, of course, um, I want to say I own Shadows, but I, I couldn't, I didn't have it when I sold it. I don't know what happened to it. It's one of those weird things where you, like, you lose games and they just disappear into the void. Like my zombies ate my neighbors for super. It just disappeared into the abyss. I have no idea where it went ever. It... I need to get that because I have a box for it, but I have the Genesis version. You're just holding on because you're like, damn it, I have it on Genesis. I don't need the same game twice because uh, yes. it's literally going to be game. the same game. It, it but, is the exact same game. Um, but here we are for this. This launched in, I want to say, September of 96. Correct. So it launched a full year after the PlayStation, and it, it came out hot. It came out you know, hot and heavy because Nintendo was a brand now after two systems and a handheld that was name brand. It was like buying, you know, buying the new Nintendo was buying a new quality product gaming machine. Now, the difference is is that both Sega and Sony went with disc-based systems. Nintendo stuck with the cart. They went with the cart. Originally they were going to go with disc. The the all the early plans were them going with the disc. Wasn't that wasn't the system originally like being worked on with Sony? Um, was that like the lead-in that was the Sony like they were CD working with system? Sony 
to make a CD system for the Super Nintendo. Super, that's my and fault. And it was going to be called the PlayStation, and it was going to be co-branded. It was, Sony was going to be able to sell it, and uh, it was going to, you know, and the, Sony was going to be able to make games for it for the disc based mm-hmm. and uh, that was going to be their primary one but it was also going to have a slot for Super Nintendo game cartridges for you to be able to play all all the existing library which was you know they saw what Sega was doing with the CD system and like well we want something comparable so Sony came out at one of the E3's is like yeah we're working with Nintendo and we're doing this disc you know, based system for us and this is what we have here and then Nintendo came out for their press conference and said we're actually working with Philips Really? Yeah. At the press conference? Yeah. That's shysty. And Sony's like, hmm. shut down. We're news to us, guys. Uh, yeah, that sucks. That kind of sparked them, though. Really, it fueled them to create the PlayStation and yeah, they, set themselves it, apart. So then, uh, I want to say they went somewhere else first. Uh, before they decided to make their own way. And I don't know if they were going over to Sega and saying, hey, this is what we got. Are you guys interested in integrating it? Sega's like, we already got our own thing going on. So so Sony's like, you know what? We're already invested this much money. Roll up the sleeves. Let's go. We're going to make our own system. Finish the work. And so, I mean, at this time, you had a 3DO system. You had, uh, like, Philips finished their system. It was called the Philips CDI. And uh, what the deal that led to that, it wasn't a two in one. It was a just a CD based system that then you had really crappy like Philips made Nintendo property games on there. Oh no! And it was a nightmare for Nintendo. That whole experience left a bad taste in their mouths for the disc media. So when going into this, there was a good you know a good proportion of the company guys that were like, we needed to go disc to compete, and there's other guys going. Mm. New higher ups going. I don't know. Disc is. I don't. I don't, I don't know. I, I think we just need to stick with cartridges. And uh, other people in this in this company are like, no, dude. Like it's gonna be so much cheaper. And the, you know. And but they but they ended up losing out. And we ended up getting uh, these cartridges. And they never call them cartridges. I don't know if you ever know this. No, I didn't. They call them game packs. Actually, I did know that. I just never even connected those two. But it's funny that you grabbed that game. Because that was the first of the games that I got. WCW versus NW World Tour. It's not uh, that great. Well, it, it's made by a- AKI and published by THQ. And uh, this is one of the first big games that I played as well. And, uh, of course, big wrestling fan growing up. Of course, in like the era of like the Monday Night War and all that kind of stuff. You know, w- WCW and the, and the AWO, and they, they were really hot at the time. Yep. So it was really cool to be into them and, and, to, to, be, and, and to be able to play, but... The cartridges, just like any of the other cartridge-based systems, you know, load it right up here at the top, and you know, you you turn your system on. This system came with four controller ports, which is awesome because you could do four players or more on the Sony console, but you needed an extra adapter for that. Yep. So out of the gate, this is a little bit more friendly for four players, for more couch co-op. And man, did they create some awesome four-player games for this? Thinking about Mario Part, Mario Party, thinking about Mario Kart. I put those two words together. Yeah. <laughs> kind Mario of, Parts. <laughs> Mario Parts. <laughs> Came out as Mario Parts. But, uh, yeah, it was fun to play with multi-people on this thing. You know, mm-hmm. you could just get a bunch of friends together and nerd down. I mean, me and my dad and my sister would sometimes just sit and play whatever, you know. But uh, with the WCW versus NWO, it, it was like... Wow, 3D polygons and what the hell. And, of course, with the system came this game. Yeah, Ta-da! Super Mario 64 now. Before we get into Mario, what I want to say about the about the cartridges is that it severely limited the like the space capacity, and with the discs you had a lot more space capacity, like seven hundred something megabytes that they could fit on a total CD, and then of course you you you, you could use compression tricks and all this sort of stuff on a cartridge. It was also more expensive to create them, so the games were more expensive on the N sixty four than they were on the Sony PlayStation. Brand new games on the PlayStation cost you was forty bucks. On the N64, sometimes up to 70. Dang. And it really just depended, it depended on the title, space, and a lot of other things. But load times on this were really fast. Very fast. But the sound quality suffered. Also true. So it's like, it's give and take with the system. Um, but the game uh, that came with the system packed in was Super Mario 64. And of course it was. I mean, there's, besides the GameCube and maybe the Wii. Like, 
there's always been a big Mario title usually associated with the system. And even with the Switch that came out last year, um, it, it took a little while, but we got Mario Odyssey out of it. Yeah, they hyped that Odyssey and was so, coming. Like, Odyssey is really like probably the closest thing to a sequel this game has gotten. Really? In my opinion. That's awesome. Um, Makes me want to Switch even more. Damn it. Oh, dude, you need to get Switch. You'll love it. Okay. I absolutely love the system. You know, <coughs> I fell asleep during a Star Wars movie once. Oh, did you? It was when Mike and I first started dating. Oh, fun. It was in my old apartment, too. So, <laughs> But we were watching Star Wars, and I had fallen asleep because I worked days. He was working nights. Oh, God. I the farted. Worst. And I woke myself up. <laughs> See, I always do the <laughs> snort yourself awake. But you took it one step further. I was, okay, I didn't know that it was my fart at first. I It was so loud. <laughs> I thought Mike had dropped something or, like, something happened. And he was just dying laughing. And it's happened two other times. Oh, my God. That's awesome. <laughs> but not always during Star Wars. The second time was in our first apartment together. Technically, I just moved into his, but, you know, whatever. whatever. But, um... He had gotten home. He was still working nights, and I was in bed, and I remember waking up, because it sounded like a gunshot or something, and in that place, it wouldn't have been, you know, unlikely. Yeah. <laughs> but... Would not have surprised me. <laughs> but, yeah, it, it, I was like, holy shit, and then it was, oh my god, that was my own fart, so I tried to just play it off, like, that totally didn't wake me up, you know, but... I'm definitely not awake over here. He heard me. <laughs> he obviously heard the fucking fart. <laughs> Who didn't? But he also heard me, like, trying to figure out how to get back to sleep, because I guess I toss and turn so much. Oh, and that's awesome. the third time was just a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> you were like, I thought I put this past me. Or, I know. I thought I was past this. I, I, I can't was, English, apparently. I thought this was behind me. Yes. I thought I put <laughs> it all behind. Oh, uh, I see what you did there. <laughs> So, since Mike is back on nights, that must be what it is. Because yes. during days, I never once woke myself up with a fart. Well, and I mean, even if you did, how would he know? Because he would probably be asleep, too. That's true. Yeah. But I didn't. I haven't woken myself and up. And now you can just blame it all on Patty. Yeah, this one I couldn't. <laughs> I farted, woke up, saw that he was getting in bed, and then I started laughing. <laughs> Sorry if there was a thud. <laughs> so we've had a change of venue for yes. the first time ever. We're recording at my house instead of Joanna's. There's no Patty. There's no Patty, which does make me sad. But you may occasionally hear Brandon yelling at Wyatt in the background. Because <laughs> I have a very small house and a two and a half year old. So shit's gonna happen. But the reason we are here is because I decided to smoke a blunt with my sister and throw my back out. So driving is not really all that fun for me right now, but um, got some good medication and a heating pad, and I'm sort of hunched over the table to be able to talk to you, and I'm doing okay. Mm -hmm. You're doing really good. So, doing way better than I was on Monday. Trust. So last night, we were talking about smoking tricks, and throwing your back out really does come into this conversation. I long to hear. <laughs> so... When we all started first smoking, what did we all do nonstop? We coughed our fucking heads off. Yes. So for the longest time, like, this is the only smoke trick I know, you know, die. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. So Finally over bronchitis, by the way. <laughs> oh my God. And then we've done the, what is it? The French inhale. Yes. Got that now. But you have something else now. You can cough <laughs> and throw your back out. At the same time. So blessed. Like, <laughs> so blessed. It just I don't know why that made me think of the coughing of how that was a smoke trick, but now you have a new one. I can also and... blow O's. 
<laughs> That's hilarious, though, because I was just talking to my nephew about, like, vape tricks the other day because, I mean, he's 12, so he's seen that stuff on Facebook and stuff. How many times can I say stuff? Lord. But stuff. But stuff. <laughs> oh, my God. What were... Brandon and I were watching... Oh, um, the last Pirates movie, Dead Men Tell No Tales. I haven't watched it yet. Oh, okay. Well, it's not a spoiler, but they say the name of the movie in the movie, and I looked at Brandon like that, the, you know, the meme dog that's like, hey. <laughs> and he goes, aha. <laughs> I was like, yes, we speak to each other in <laughs> Simlish. <laughs> so, Narbo Bazed. I've been thinking of vape tricks. Have you seen that viral video that we've that's been going around of the guy who's going to do a vape trick and he leans back really far and then he just smashes his head into a fridge or a wall or something? I feel like and, I probably have. Yeah, he's like, you know, inhaling his vape the whole way, leaning back, and then he just smashes his fucking head. And... I didn't think that. I was like, okay, let's see what this motherfucker has to do. And I just wasn't expecting it. And then, poof. Every time I see the vape trick videos, and I mean, I know what people say about people who vape. Like, mm, so douchey, whatever. But, I don't know. I think vaping is excellent because it gets people off of cigarettes. That's exactly And what cigarettes will kill you. So, please, by all means, vape. I don't care. But, do you ever turn your vape off for some reason and then go to vape and you've forgotten to turn it back on because that literally happens to me at least once a day because i'll like turn it off to put it in the diaper bag or something to carry it to the car and then i go to vape and i'm like what there's nothing happening (laughs) and i look at it and i'm like god damn it such a dumbass (laughs) oh that smells good what happens to me I don't turn it off. Mike takes the batteries out to take mine. And then I'll... Son of a bitch. <laughs> There's no batteries. Just buy more batteries. We have two and a charger. But, you know, sometimes that doesn't always work out. I Do you want... I have 18650 batteries that you can have. No, you need them. No, literally, I have three sets that I rotate through. And then I have extras. <laughs> I have, like, 12 batteries or something like that. I mean, I'll pay you in a lap dance or Hell whatever you want. yes. It won't be very good. I am so down. <laughs> you guys have no idea Joanna's makeup today is, like, so on point. She's got red lipstick on, and it goes so well with your red hair. It's the life. Yes. And I don't know if we've talked about your... Did we talk about your weight loss goals? A little bit. Yeah. Well, Joanna looks good like we're we're all totally pro fat here because i'm fat and i'm not losing weight currently but like if losing weight is what you want to do with your own body we support that um so joanna looks hella good so good halfway there but i'm gonna have to buy jeans i'm so upset (laughs) we we had this entire discussion about whether it is jeans shopping or jean shopping because google is no help on this topic no and everyone says it differently yes i want to know there has to be some professor somewhere that knows something is it jeans or jean please write us (laughs) email us actually don't just tweet at us or something comment on instagram (laughs) i'm like tweet at us on the twitter that we never use i have never logged into it (laughs) half the time i forget it exists so don't feel bad but i wore these damn jeans yesterday okay and i was walking across street you know it's fucking snowy it's icy it's terrible here it's so cold and wet and i was carrying leftovers because i had some really awesome ramen so good Ooh, did you post a picture of that? I did. Oh, it looks so good. The eggs. You have to eat. You cannot reheat the eggs. They're gross that way. But Well, yeah, no. Oh, my gosh. They just sit in that broth, and they're so good. Oh. And they're the soft-boiled eggs, so they're still runny. Also, it's we nice. still need to go get pho, because we never did. No, we didn't. So we need to definitely go get it, and maybe eat there. So, yeah. I'm carrying this fucking ramen, 
and I'm just holding <coughs> it for dear life because it's fifteen dollars a bowl. Oh god! <laughs> I'm like, I really don't want to lose my Please. leftovers. <laughs> And my fucking pants are falling down, and I'm trying to, like, walk around, you know, trying to walk all the way to the fucking car that's across the fucking block. Oh, no. Goddamn pants are slipping down, I'm thinking, oh, And you're God. doing that, like, where you wiggle your butt to try and get them up again? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Please don't fall down. It's too fucking cold. I don't want people to see that. I have granny panties on. Like, <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> Gotta put on granny panties to go eat ramen. That is a thing. Okay. I wear granny panties all the time. <laughs> There's some so. places it's like, this is a yoga pants and granny panties occasion. Agree. <laughs> it's time for Brews with Dudes. <laughs> ah, juicy. It's not bad. Nice and smooth. I like Real it. smooth. I'm about it. Now, if I'm not mistaken, it's just mosaic hops, correct? Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what it would appear. Yeah. yeah. So I'm yeah. assuming that's the only hop that they used with this brew. Probably. Or at least primarily, if that's yeah. the only one that they're mentioning. It's only 6%. That's not too bad. I've noticed that Pipeworks is a little lower on the alcohol content, usually, for their beers. We need to make so, a trip up there sometime. That, that would, would be, be fun. Sweet. That would be fun. More about beers you can drink, not just the nut kickers. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but see, we're alcoholics. Yeah, so we like we like the nut kicker. <laughs> we're not to admit it or not. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely enjoying this one though. It's uh, definitely got a better flavor than the uh, the sour we just had, the ghost sour. Yeah, that was. I don't know, man. Like I said, it was just really, really salty. You could. I didn't taste any salt. Just oh. the only thing I tasted was generic sour. No, uh, I this don't rem- know. this reminds me of like a. Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. I kind of get that a little bit. I might like this one a little more, though. The color is nice. It Very is. Very yellow. Yeah. Um, you can't... You can't... You can it's see really... through... You can kind of see through it. Not very clearly, though. It's a little it's pretty, cloudy. Pretty, yeah, cloudy, hazy. But I'm definitely enjoying it. Mm-hmm. It's been a while since I've had Sierra Nevada. I don't know if I would compare it to that I'd have to have Sierra Nevada again. It's been a long time. I've just been drinking other crafts. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not drinking much Sierra Nevada lately either, but it definitely makes me think of it. Hmm. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's mosaic hops in general. Maybe. Maybe I'm. I'm not saying that I'm not a fan. Have you ever brewed with mosaic hops? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, Which yeah. brews did you but do with that? It's usually something we put at the bat at that it's buried. The it's dry not, hop. No, oh, no. no. Okay. The dry hop is what you want at the front. Right. Okay. To be very, very floral, man. We uh. Yesterday, we bottled our New England style IPA that had a lot of dry hopping, and we opened we opened it up, and it was the just the perfect smelling IPA, and it was so clear. It was the clearest we've nice. ever done. Wow! It's the first one that we threw outside when uh, we were getting ready to bottle it. We threw it out a couple of days early, um, kind of flash freeze it, and so all the sediment just went down to the very very bottom, oh. and it is. Huh. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, we I'm taste, ready to we, try it. We tasted it, and it was pretty good. We got about, but, it takes about two weeks to prime in the yeah. bottle. And so, then, we got a couple weeks. I'm very excited for it. Much That excites. does sound good. That does sound good. I also saw uh, you had done the, the Bizarre Noir beer. Mm-hmm. Um, what was that one again? Refresh my memory. We're calling the, it the Hydra Stout. Yes, um, For yes. the three heads, because it's got blueberries, bourbon, and chocolate. Nice. That sounds amazing. It's it's meaty looking. Um, we've got another one coming called the Yes Man um, because we said yes to everything. Like, should we put this in it? Yeah. How about this? Yeah. So it's got chocolate and coffee, and it's going to have uh, some of the blueberries. It's going to have cherry bourbon. It's it's going to be a mess. That's going to be good. Though. It's going to be wow. a beautiful mess. That's going to be good. It's going to be fun trying to dissect all the different flavors out of it but so yeah we we got those two sitting in secondary it'll probably be a little bit longer before the yes man but we're probably going to um get to i guess technically the loose brew 3.0 is going to be ready before the bizarre because the bizarre is a stout so we're probably going to want to let that sit for a second so next is the Honey Nut Beerios, which I'm yes. excited for. Yeah, that one's going to be good. It's going to be so good. I can't wait for it. 
So, yes, I did misspoke. It's it's going to be the Honey Nut Beerios, then the Lusa Brew, then the Bazaar, then the Yes Man. But the New England is bottled and we'll be ready. We'll be ready to drink soon. Very nice. The other ones are sitting in the old closet. Very nice. I'm definitely still enjoying this Lizard King, though. Mm-hmm. I'm glad I've got one at home still. Not I wish I had some pipe works in the fridge. So I've, I've got a jealous. I've got a couple left at the house, so it'll give me give me something to enjoy. Maybe I will have to come over and play some magic or do another you game soon. Have some at the house. I do still? have do some at my house still. Are you sure? Pretty positive. You've I never count on it. Why do you say that, Zach? Why are oh, you questioning oh, him? I don't know. Because he's he's implying that he's going to steal my beer. I'm not implying shit. Well, I mean, do you have teeth? Do you? Oh, okay. Huh. Cool. I don't. Silence. <laughs> You're scaring me, Zach. I don't like hearing about thieving ways. Makes me uncomfortable as we're sitting in my house. I'll offer you, Nick, now that he's sitting in, since I'm in, under the assumption he's going to try and steal my beer. You're going to have to come over and drink it with me beforehand. All right. We'll have to solve that issue real quick. He's going to drink it with you. Oh. 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 Uh, that's no not, one's that's buying not it, the Zach. implication no I got. No one's buying it. <laughs> That's not the implication I got, shit. because I said I knew it was still in the fridge, and you you questioned that. So we're doing we're doing something fun with the with the the podcasting network that I'm part of, the Journey into Comics Network. We're doing a road to Marvel's uh, uh, Avengers. Is this three? Uh, yeah, the Infinite, Infinity War. Wars. Infinity War, yeah. <laughs> so everybody, there's ten shows on the network. Everyone's gonna watch every single movie in the Marvel Universe Ooh. and then review it. So we have been uh we have picked Iron Man three and Captain America two, the Winter Soldier. Okay. So those are the movies that we've got to review. I haven't seen Winter Soldier and I've not seen Iron Man three in a couple of years. And I heard Winter Soldier was really good, and I know for sure the Iron Man three was not. So, <laughs> so it's gonna be it's gonna be fun going over those two. So that'll probably be the next two episodes. Um, that'll be exciting. Looking forward to that. I think I have Iron Man three. I'm gonna have to either borrow or go buy the Captain America. Might I don't know if it's on any network or platform. It or might anything. still be on Netflix. You it might, it it might be around. No, it's Civil, sure. War. Civil War is on Netflix. I don't, I don't Marvel very much. I'm not, no, I'm, I'm not, not a, I'm not the biggest Marvel fan. I likes the Marvel. I do. So I mean, don't get me wrong. Gonna, I you, do. You gonna get down on it, Zach? With me? I totally get down on it. Since you were just talking about stealing, I mean, you could just go steal. <laughs> oh wow! Now you're both in on it. Now you're both. I have a lot of beer I have to drink now when I get home, Whoa. so y'all motherfuckers can't steal. It. Encouraging him to steal no, and stealing steal myself anything. are totally different things. I don't know, For the record, man. I am not a thief, people. Okay. Anyway, so if someone wants to let us borrow, <laughs> if someone wants to let us borrow the Winter Soldier, that would be great. I bet you it's not too bad. I bet you, I bet we get it for ten bucks somewhere anyway. I'm sure. So yeah. Hmm. Yeah, well, let's just get away from the notion yeah. of, of stealing things. None yeah, of us are yeah, thieves. No. We're not, let's stop joking no, about it. I'm no. getting uncomfortable. I think we're ready for re- we're ready to move on past the Lizard King. And no offense to him, but I think we vanquished the Lizard King this time. Is that is that me on there whooping his ass? I don't know. There's a big skeleton on here fighting the Lizard King. There's yeah. I'm just gonna say that's me. That's me whooping the Lizard King's ass right there. Sure, why not? Thanks for your input, Zach. <laughs> Appreciate that. That one was only 6%. That wasn't too bad at all. No, it was, it was tasty. I first had Lizard Lizard King. Uh, actually, I think I think there was Lizard King in that batch. But I was saying the first time I had Pipeworks was at the Doom Room's 100th show at Carnahan Hall. Mm-hmm. Uh, had 17 bands and uh, one of the gentlemen from one of the bands... Uh, Mr. Adrian Harris from Testimony, uh, uh, I believe, had started working up at Pipeworks. Oh. I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure what he was doing up there, but he came with, I think it was five or six different beers from there. And we just got the fuck down on them. They were so good. Nice. Sounds like a good time. Man, speaking of a good time, that can looks like a good time. I know, is this another Pipeworks? I wish you all could see this camera right now. We're jumping. It's, it's so pretty. So many different colors. We'll, we'll jump into the description when it's not in somebody's hand. 
But uh, it's another pipe work, so it's just as colorful as as the Lizard King. Um, I believe last time we did Ninja vs. Unicorn? No, we have was we have that this time. Last time was the mango guppy. Ah, so which this one's is this? this is the passion fruit guppy. There we go. Yes. Ah. This is the passion fruit guppy, and next we will delve into the ninja versus unicorn. Sweet. So this is kind of a this is a very pipe works heavy episode. Yeah, it was. Um, last time we did the we did Illinois part one. Um, I had more of uh, we had a couple four hands. Um, which is actually in St. Louis. I apologize, uh, but we had that Moroccan coffee stout. That was really good. Um, and oh, that, that yeah. snake oil IPA. That's spicy. That it, one was, it was like the it spicy was. stout. That was good.